And we're back and we're here with the director of Flat Track at the X Games taking place at Circuit of the Americas this week for the first time in history. It's Mr. X Games himself, Dan Johnson. Dan, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Nice to be here. Oh, absolutely. So how are you feeling right now? I mean, is there excitement? Are you excited yet? Oh, it, it's it's crazy that it, this is um, an experience like um, I didn't expect everything. It's just it's overwhelming how massive X Games is and and it almost runs like a military operation and they have to do it that way. But it's just it's 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 bad. I'm, I'm psyched. Bad in a good way, right? So, yes. I, I mean, a congratulations, I think, is in order. I mean, that is a big deal. Just a few years ago, uh, racing in general in the States, flat track included, was at basically a standstill. Uh, there wasn't much to write home about. There wasn't a lot of excitement around it, even though we know how great it is. But what a huge step to enter the X Games. Tell us how that came about. Uh, absolutely. It's, um, I've been working with um, Eric Perinard uh, uh, for quite a while and 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 helping flat track come to the X games. And it wouldn't have happened unless Harley Davidson stepped up and did what they did. So if, if it wasn't for Harley and their interest, uh, in, in flat track and, and their, um, their devotion to the sport, we wouldn't be here without them. Well, let's talk about it. I mean, there's, there's extreme athletes. It's the upper echelon of extreme athletes for that matter. But for some reason in the past, the racing, which we know is so extreme, has never translated as an extreme sport. So how did they marry those two and, and finally make this a partnership? Um, you know, it's, that's kind of hard to say. It's, I've always considered flat track the original extreme sport. You know, so I always wondered why it wasn't here. Um, and, and these guys, I mean, um, flat track racers are, are top notch athletes. Um, they're, uh, sometimes I think they're a little insane for what they do. And I know a lot of guys who come to watch flat track races and say, you know, uh, you know, other racers who say I would never even attempt that. So I think it fits right in with, with, uh, extreme sports and with X games. And our next guest is known for being a video maker in the motorsports industry. He is a true artiste with an eye and passion for motorcycles, along with being the founder of Built Clothing. With us today in studio, Thunder McAfee. Thunder, thanks for joining us. What a privilege to be here. It is a privilege, <laughs> you're right. If you're not familiar with Thunder's work, you, we'll catch you up right here with his 2014 highlight video.
So that's right, we've got 10 questions for our in-studio guests on the Next Moto Champion Game Show. And today, if he gets just half of them, just five out of 10 right, we're gonna send him home with this American Cargo Trooper bag. This is a brand new bag from American Cargo. It is an awesome, awesome backpack. And man, wouldn't you like to have this? Yeah. I just, I five questions, that's all you got. Five questions for Thunder today. It's not, not yet, not I yet, like not I'm yet. Take it. Franklin, the city that you're in right now, is uh, rich in Civil War history. So I thought I'd start off with a little Civil War. Union forces captured every Confederate state capital city east of the Mississippi except for one during the Civil War. Which Confederate state capital city was not captured? Is it the one I live in? Florida, Tallahassee, unconquered? Tallahassee, Florida is the answer. You're one there. All right. You're right there. You set me up. That's, uh, I gave, that was a little bit of a softball. That was a little bit of a softball. What is the listed horsepower of the 2009 KTM 990 Super Motard? 2009, same year as your haircut. Uh, I'm trying to think. 112 ish? 116. Close, but no cigar. So you're one for one, that's all right. You're still in the game. You're still looking okay. at taking the backpack home with you. If you have a piece of glass or transparent substance with curved sides for concentrating or dispersing light rays, this is referred to as... Uh, it's a camera a lens. I thought, no, it's, a, it's, a, it's called a camera lens. I thought since you're in cameras, you would know that, but... Are you McDonald's has a marketing campaign that's famous for saying, I'm loving it. What is it? <laughs> that is a good question. Um, man, probably a good mixture of poultry and, um, I don't know who eats there. Do you eat there? You look like you. I'm not going to be able to give you that one. <laughs> There's still a chance. Mm. There's still a chance. On a mountain bike, which part of the bicycle is most responsible for getting you up a steep incline? Uh, the pedals. Uh, oh, the wheels, the tires. Oh, the can't, tires, can't okay. Without the tires. Okay, pick a part, yeah. yeah. Uh, Any part, <laughs> pick a part, but yeah, you need the tires too. Yeah, the okay. tires are All right. crucial. You can't do it without the tires. See? True or false, you're still in this. You still got a chance, true or false. If tomato is a fruit, then does that make ketchup a smoothie? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> Do you like ketchup smoothies? Is no. that how you thought is of that? It's a true or false question. True oh, false. true or false? Yeah. If tomato is a fruit, does that make ketchup a smoothie? Yes, true. Correct. All right. All right, you're in this. You still got it. All you have to do is not yet, not yet, not yet. Okay. What do you get when you put a number one into a calculator and then you put a number two? What do you get? T you add a number two. 21. Uh, no, it would be 12. You, you put it, you well, had it back. One, they one, move from the, then, oh yeah, they move. move. Yeah. Yeah, so anyways, but here, let's go for second place prize. Set of steak knives. Yeah, yeah, I haven't knives. used a calculator in a while. So you've raced SMEC Supermoto Series. Who is the least talented rider you've ever raced against? The least talented rider I've ever raced against in that yeah. Supermoto. Yeah. Brian Yearwood? Correct answer. That's actually what we have right here, Brian yeah. Yearwood. Local rider around here. Local, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not talented. No. No. It's uh, not that he's not talented, right. it's the least. You least, asked yeah, specifically. That's, that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Deal or no deal? Deal. Correct. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Now, this one's big. What is the important, if you get this one right, you're going home with the backpack. I want that backpack. What is the significance of this important date, and it's coming up soon? July 9th, 1985. July 9th, 1985. Yeah. That is, what is that? Oh, Jul hold on, you know? <laughs> July 9th? July 9th, 1985. Is that when Minute Work 
Land Down Under was released or no. written or come out. Oh. It's your wife's birthday. Oh, man. Oh, my come gosh. On. Come on. All right, guys, that was uh, our 10 questions in the next Moto Champion game show. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Some really, 2014 was a good year for you. Um, you did some work with Yoshimira. Um, we, we had an awesome video with Dane Westby that was on there. We did a JD Beach video. Um, when you look back at, at 2014, what do you remember the most from everything you did? Because you did a lot of work. Yeah, it's, for sure. It really was the, uh, I, I can't believe how it went. Like, it was like the breakout year, for sure, from start to finish. And uh, I, got to, I got to go, like, I got the invite randomly to go film, like, Barsha, he lives near me, and, you know, getting just nasty whips and just all, all kinds of opportunities kept going with you. We were working, um, I don't know, standing out the most would, would uh, you know, it was fun to go out to uh, San Francisco area and all that. I love it out there um, for flat track, you know. Right. And, uh, of course, that's what I'm filming the most. And, um, yeah, so those trips out west are always fun. But, man, I, I like to travel, and I'm, I'm kind of liking flat track a lot now. 2015, you're working with AMA Pro. Uh, a lot of flat track stuff. You're, you're really the guy who's sending out the clips after the races that everybody's looking forward to seeing. Um, what's, that, what's that like for you being right there in the middle of it for flat track? Yeah, like... I, I like it a lot now. Like, like I was saying, it, it hadn't always been like that. It's been a little bit of a, you know how emotions are, a little bit of a roller coaster on uh, like, okay, they're turning left, I bet, you know. <laughs> but uh, Next corner. Yeah, next corner. Oh, I'll shoot this one different. Oh, so oh I've gotten that angle before. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's all right. Now I'm getting into the, the, the guys, the racers, and they're all super cool. You know, I, right. I, I like, I, that's the best part, you know, working with them and stuff. But uh, yeah, I... Also, you know, I work with Flat Track Live a little bit. She's, she's, uh, Miriam's also been a, a big part of bringing me in. And then, and I have an awesome relationship now with AMA. Uh, and Gene is my main man there. Uh, right. We work together a lot for the broadcast for FansChoice.tv. And right. yeah, it's, it's been great. I'm, I'm pumped this year. And the, the Flat Track series is gaining just, just crazy attention. You know, you, you've seen it. So, uh, international and everything now. So, right. that, it, it's, so it's amazing. Studio, yeah. That's a Bridgestone Copia. I've never seen them out in the wild like this. It's young, too. They're very young. We're here studying the behavior of Bridgestone's fuel-efficient Ecopia tires in their natural setting. They can help you save up to $450 in gas over their lifetime. What? Holy smokes, that's a great deal. <sighs> great. You scared it away. Oh. Start going green and saving some green. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. This segment was brought to you by Geico, where 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. And we're back, and we're here with a former member of the NMC staff and a good friend of ours, and we've missed him. It's the number 65, Corey Texter. Corey, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. I'm uh, really excited to see you guys. Missed you too, so I'm stoked to be on the show. Well, we're happy to have you, and it's great to see you on to bigger and better things like the X Games. So tell us about the experience. We know how it ended for you, but tell us about the experience overall. The experience was awesome. Aside from the racing, I had a real good time, met some great people, got to work with the ESPN crew, the X Games staff was super friendly. I had a blast, you know, it was it was a great time. Everything we did there was surreal. You know, we got treated like royalty. So it was definitely awesome and I can't wait to go back again next year. Right. So you guys made history obviously on a number of levels, flat track in the X Games, uh, the first sibling rivalry to race against each other in the X Games or to compete against each other rather. So um, tell us about the racing. You know, you qualified well in six, so you had high expectations for yourself, but ultimately uh, it didn't end so well for you. Yeah, like you said, I qualified pretty decent. You know, it was the first time riding that motorcycle. We, uh, I got hooked up with the team I rode last. For, I rode for them last year, and the bike was new, so hopped on that bike, and we were riding well. You know, we qualified decent, but you know, unfortunately, things don't 
happen always the way you want them to. We lined up for the heat race, and I guess they just watered the track before we went out. It was really slippery. It had some inconsistent spots on it, and uh, I got a pretty bad start. I wheelied on the starting gate. You know, I have lack of experience on starting gates, but wheelied on the starting gate and was trying to be aggressive, make my way up to top five, get that direct transfer, pitched in in the turn one and later down. So it was unfortunate. You know, I've never crashed a twin before in my whole career. So I guess if I'm going to do it for the first time, might as well make sure it's on national television. But all in all, you know, we went down. We didn't have the result we wanted, but the smile, it couldn't leave my face. It was a uh, a great experience, and I was glad and blessed to be a part of it. Well, Dan Johnson put it great uh, in a great way. He said it was the original extreme sport as far as we were concerned. How was it received by the other athletes there? We know it's the first time for them, probably a lot of them in general, to be exposed to flat track. So how was it uh, received by everybody else? Yeah, that's something I was nervous about. I was, you know, we're the new kids in class, you know, the skateboarders, the BMX. They've been a part of that event for some of them 20 years. Bob Burnquist has been competing, I think they said, for 24 years at the X Games. So for us to come in and open open up the X Games, we were the first event. And I was a little nervous, but a lot of the athletes, well, every athlete that I've spoken to, they were super stoked to have us in the athlete lounge. You know, I met a lot of great people, a lot of skateboarders, BMX riders, and it was refreshing to see a lot of tweets from some of the athletes. Todd Potter, a freestyle motocross guy, was stoked to have us. Lance Corey, a lot of great athletes were were just stoked to have us a part of the event, and and that felt good, you know, to be appreciated. And um, you know, the track was rough, and we didn't really get to showcase the high speeds that we do. But you know, muscling around that 320 pound bike, 90 horsepower, the other athletes definitely appreciated what we were able to do. So that was cool. That's great. And we know that guys like Chad Kagey and um, Bestwick and those types of extreme athletes have actually tried their hand at motorcycle racing. So I'm sure they were giving everybody the good word for you guys. And we're here with the first female to win an AMA Pro Flat Track event. It's the number 52, Shayna Texter. Shayna, welcome to the show. Thanks, Danielle. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So you make up the other half of the uh, Texter sibling rivalry that was going on at the X Games. You guys made history in more ways than one. Uh, one way was being that you're the first sibling duo to compete against each other. So tell us about that. Yeah, no, it's it's always interesting every time I line up for my brother. And uh, we were able to line up with each other in the semi and uh, at X Games and battle it out. And it's it's been a long time since we've been able to race with each other over the years. And uh, it's, it's a new, exciting feeling that, uh, you know, you don't experience with anyone else on the track. We watched um, the pre-show leading up to the X Games with the story about you guys. It was a really emotional story. You cried, I cried, I'm sure everybody else cried as well. I mean, tell us about having the X Games and ESPN come into your home, shoot this story on you guys, and, and how that was received at the X Games. No, it was it was a one of a one of a kind experience, you know, to have two guys come out and shoot us for two straight days and follow us around. It was a new a new experience. It was fun. Um, he pressured me for 30 minutes, and uh, you know, I finally started crying. And he goes, "Thank you." And I'm like, "Man, if you wanted me to cry, I would have cried right off the start." <laughs> but, right. Um, you know, it was just pure emotion, just coming from my heart, talking, and uh, you know, I really didn't think about touching other people. I was just being honest and. Uh, it's pretty special to hear the amount of people that came up to me and said I, I cried after watching you. So it's, it's pretty cool. And welcome back to the Next Moto Champion Game Show with Corey and Shayna competing against each other for the second time this week. Little friendly sibling rivalry going on here. Okay, are we ready for our first question? Let's do it. Number one, since 1980, which rider has taken the AMA Grand National Championship nine times? Corey? Scott Parker. Scott Parker. The answer is Scott Parker. Okay. Woo! In 2006, the motorcycle land speed world record was broken at the Bonneville Soft Flats when this AMA Grand National Champion went 350.8 miles an hour. Who was it? That would be my uncle Chris Carr. Chris Carr. The answer is Chris Carr. Which of the following motorcycle manufacturers has not won an AMA Grand National Championship? Yamaha, Suzuki, Honda, Triumph, BSA or Harley Davidson? Oh. Wow. Well, 
I know some of those have one. I'm gonna sh shoot out of a cannon and say, I'm gonna say Suzuki. Suzuki. The answer is Suzuki. Very good, okay. Which flat tracker turn road racer never captured a flat track AMA Grand National Championship? Is it Kenny Roberts, Chris Carr, Wayne Rainey, or Gary Nixon? It's either Wayne Rainey or Kenny Roberts. I'm going with Kenny Roberts. I know he was fast and he won a lot of races, but I don't think he won a title. Is it Kenny Roberts? Gary Nixon. The answer is Wayne Rainey. Ooh. Oh. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where or what is the world's longest consecutive running dirt track race? Well, I think it's the Barbara Fritchie in Frederick, Maryland, if we're talking about non-nationals. But if we're talking nationals, I'm going to say Peoria. Frederick, Maryland? The answer is Peoria. Right on. Okay, ready? And I'm sorry, Corey, I know how much and you hate And the winner is Shayna Texer. Congratulations, Shayna. <laughs> Just kidding, Corey, you won. Congratulations to Corey Texer, sibling Texer number one. Congratulations. Right. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Shayna. Thanks so much to both of our contestants on the next Moto Champion Game Show. We'll be right back after this commercial break to wrap things up. This little beauty here is top of the line. So you just pull like this to go left, and like so to go right. Where are the brakes? I just grab a hold of both and pull straight back. And the whoa is optional. You wouldn't buy a motorcycle without handlebars. No, thanks. And you shouldn't ride a motorcycle without GEICO insurance. Roadside assistance, 24-hour service, great rates. GEICO Motorcycle. See how much you could save. We're back and we're here with the founder and co-founder of Cafe Racer Triple X, Sasha Valentine and Carrie Borelli. Welcome to the show, ladies. Hi, thanks for having us. Yeah, so you. your latest project, you want everyone to throttle to the races with you. You've put together a ride to follow you to Hagerstown. Tell us about this event. I'm really excited. Um, basically, we have a group of riders coming from um, Delaware, um, Pennsylvania, DC to go support the Hagerstown round. So. It's just a bunch of riding groups trying to convert fans, people that already love two wheels. And I think the easiest way to generate new fans is to show them racing. So that's what we're doing. So let's talk about a few things here. You've got some great sponsors on board like Triumph and, and several others. Tell us about that. Yes, we have Triumph on board, which is really important. I think they see the value um, as a factory in supporting this type of event to grow fans. We also have British Customs and uh, Grifter Gloves, New York City Motors, Moto Film Festival, um, Search and Rescue Denim. Basically, we have a lot of sponsors on board, and they're all giving us products to donate to a raffle. And to win these products, all you have to do is be on the ride. Yeah, and honestly, we actually have almost as many prizes as we do participants, so almost everyone will probably win something. Perfect, and you do have to be on the ride to win a prize, but it's great because you've got companies like Triumph, who've got this great street culture, also a great race culture, and they're doing incredibly well right now uh, in the Pro Race Series. So you've blended your two passions, the street riding and the cafe racer culture, with the racing. Now tell us why that's important for you as a fan. We know you're a new fan to the race scene, but you found it very important to blend the two. Why? Um, being a new fan, uh, when I was actually at the Hagerstown round last year, the stands were pretty empty. Um, it's sort of upsetting because racing is our roots. Um, it's something I fell in love with. 
I think it's an easy translation um, because I love two wheels. But personally, um, I think it's important to to keep building up um, uh, fan activation and fans at the races. So get us up to speed with what's going to happen from beginning to end, what's going on in, in between uh, where you meet up and where you end up at Hagerstown. What can people expect? Right, so at 10 a.m. we're all going to meet at um, Druid Hill Park Reservoir in Baltimore. Um, and kickstands are going to go up at 10.20. We'll take off um, towards Hagerstown. We're going to stop at Fredericktown uh, Triumph for a complimentary lunch, and we're going to do the raffle drawing there. Um, then we're going to continue on to Hagerstown. We'll have a meet and greet with a couple of the racers there. And um, hopefully everyone will just have a great time and enjoy the race. Good. Where are you right now? Huh. I'm actually in my office in Prague, which is a rarity the, during this crazy June. So. Right, you're always all over the world doing all sorts of things, primarily your business, Pole Position Travel, which gives fans a VIP experience at GP races, World Superbike races, and also uh, races like Macau and the TTs. And you had a great turnout from the get-go, and you still have an incredible turnout at each race. So tell the fans who don't really know what goes on at Pole Position Travel what they could expect on any given race weekend if they were to join your tour group. Well, obviously it depends on which uh, races. Uh, I have literally just yesterday got back from the awesome Isle of Man TT, uh, and uh, we've had people who were you know, in some of the best hotels on the island, uh, we also had a slightly uh, cheaper budget package this year. We were able to put people literally in the course cars. So just before the start of the uh, senior race and the lightweight on Friday, for instance, before the ride, every position in the course car was filled with our customers who did about a 92 mile an hour lap around the circuit, which was a lot of fun. Um, uh, but in general, that's what we try to achieve. Uh, for instance, in MotoGP, we work with a number of teams and riders so that we can not only offer the conventional, you know, hotels, transfers, grandstand tickets, but we could also bring people into the paddock, meet the riders, see the garages, and indeed even at the extreme end, get right onto the MotoGP grid. So uh, it's, uh, and that's thanks to, you know, we've been doing this for over 10 years and we've got to know and I would say earn the trust of uh, a number of teams and in particular the organizers, in this case, Dorna. Right, so your destination specialist uh, is the way you put it, and I would agree with yeah. that. I've had the chance to experience as a fan uh, a weekend at Coda, and I got to go alongside uh, Kevin Schwanz at a great dinner that you put together where the fans really get to interact with the riders, which is something otherwise you may not be able to do even if you do get that great pit pass uh, at a GP weekend. So how, how hard was it to develop this relationship? I mean, they do trust you. You bring the fans into the pits sometimes and into the uh, boxes as well, and, and they get to experience something that otherwise they would not be able to without your assistance. Well, yes, as I said, trust is really uh, the coin it all works on. Uh, I've got a, I mean, I can remember going back to, you know, 2003, uh, myself getting a paddock pass just for the Sunday, uh, you know, from uh, Dorna in that case. And it was you know, kind of a magical experience. You're, you're going in there, you're you know, seeing all these writers that you loved, uh, you know, call me mad, but I was a big Max Biaggi fan. So uh, being able to actually see him up close was a real thrill. And right, it was right from then that I decided that w I wanted to direct the business uh, in a way that this kind of magical experience could be shared with everybody. And it is literally just building your way up. We started sponsoring some small riders uh, in, uh, say, 125 back then. Uh, and proud to report we sponsored young Jules Cluzel first. And we hope he will be the super sport world champion this year. So, And then we've had a couple of other uh, – uh, then, then we just kind of graduated through the years to uh, larger teams, you know, more – well-known riders and, uh, and whatnot. And of course, during all of this, we can't do anything without the approval of uh, Dorna, who run the sport. Uh, the, uh, and of course, I'm speaking about MotoGP, but now they also run super bikes. So, and we've tried to be very, very careful about you know, how we conduct ourselves and how we keep our uh, very excited uh, customers from, uh, well, maybe not doing bad things inside garages and whatnot and just basically keeping the uh, uh you know being respectful of what's going on but while still of course uh, uh engaging in all the magic and i like to think well i think results are showing that uh, we have gained that trust we are one of the biggest vip agents for the vip village in moto gp and in, of course in superbike in the isle of man for these platinum tickets we have more than 50 percent of all of those uh it is something that uh, uh we only get by 
developing trust with the organizers and the teams. Our guest of the evening is the number 32, Jake Gagne, aboard his road race factory Yamaha. He's entered the Superstock class. He was formerly the AMA Pro Daytona Sport Bike winner or champion from 2014. Now he's taking on the Superstock 1000 class and doing quite well. Jake, wait, welcome to the show. Yeah, good to be on here finally. Right, so let's talk about it. Eight out of 10 races this year, you've absolutely dominated. I mean, what's going on? Yeah, it's been a, it's been an amazing year so far. You know, we've had a lot of great races, and uh, I think you know with this new Moto America series, we've gotten a lot of races in a short amount of time so far, and it's been amazing. And uh, yeah, I've gotten a lot of wins. I've crashed out two of the races, but other than that, we've we've uh, won the rest of them. So that's that's pretty awesome. And uh, that our one, especially in that super stock class, it shows what it can do. And uh, we're usually up there running close to those guys. So. It's awesome. I mean, we knew going into the season with the combined classes of the Superstock and Superbike that it would be close racing between you guys. But, I mean, did you have any idea that you'd be contending with the front runners in Superbike? Uh, definitely not. I mean, we, that's, that's always our hope. But I think, it, uh, like I said, you know, it just shows how, how great those Superstock bikes really are, especially that Yamaha R1. And uh, I think it's cool. You know, it's cool, like you said, having the Superstock and the Superbike guys race together. And uh, especially for me, it... It always has gives me that carrot to chase out in front of out in front of me with those superbike guys and uh, yeah you know like last weekend at the at Barber we were able to stay a little bit closer to them closer than we have all year so uh, it's awesome it's fun to race with those guys especially Raj and Cam and Josh you know those guys are they're always hauling butt so between everybody we know that Danny likes to have like the same type of people under his tent that all get along, that all are on the same page and kind of have the same mentality. And he doesn't necessarily do things uh, in the typical way. He's kind of like a dad, but kind of like a coach. I mean, tell <laughs> us about that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think uh, it's sometimes it's definitely not the typical way of, of going about things, but it's awesome. You know, everybody everybody on the team is, is super awesome and we all get along so well. And, uh, you know, we always fly into the races together. We eat dinner, we eat breakfast, we eat lunch all together with the whole crew. And uh, it's always great. You know, it's like a big family and uh, it, makes, it makes it always fun. That's for sure. You know, everybody always has a smile on, our, on their face throughout the weekend. And that's, I think, what's most important. You know, we're there to have fun and uh, that's what's cool. And we can always, everybody can just always have a good time with each other and still get all the work done. That's for sure. Great. Now, what else is not typical is you and your training method. If you follow uh, Jake on Instagram, you see things like him kayaking, him hiking, him bicycling, you know, Oceanside. I mean, tell us some of the other fun things you do to keep it interesting. You say you really try hard not to just be the typical racer. Yeah, I mean, I like to do, I like to have fun and uh, do my work at the same time. But, uh, you know, when I'm home, I, like ride, I ride a lot of motocross and uh, a lot of mountain bikes. So, you know, I get a lot of training in that way. And I go to the gym, and uh, but I also surf a lot. I also kayak, spearfish. I do do pretty much anything I can get my hands on. You know, I enjoy the ocean, so I spend a lot of time in there. Me and my buddy Dylan just got back this morning. We were out in the uh, in the Pacific at like 6 a.m. this morning with the kayak, spearfishing a little bit. So uh, the visibility wasn't that good this morning, so we didn't get much. But uh, yeah, anything anything to have fun and and uh, improve myself at the same time, you know, can't go wrong. Right, to coming full circle there, total body, uh, spiritual wellness, all the above. He does double wins at Barber, flies in, goes spearfishing in the morning. Sounds fun to me, Jay. So realistically, we want to know, I mean, do you think there is a chance? We know they won't actually put you on the top step, uh, the Superbike podium. They like to keep that separate there. But, I mean, realistically, you think you have a chance of beating uh, one of those Superbike Yamahas? It's, it's not going to be easy, that's for sure, you know. Uh, you know, especially if uh, we'll see what kind of tracks we get to. You know, Miller, mm -hmm. I think, will be tough. Laguna, I think maybe it'll be a little bit easier in, in New Jersey as well. But it, it'll be really tough. But that's obviously our goal. You know, we really want to do that. We really want to be up there racing with those guys. And, you know, I think Barber, we, like you said, Barber, we had kind of our closest weekend. I was able to keep those guys in sight for, for longer than I have all year. So I think, if anything, we're, we're getting closer and we're making progress. And uh, that's all we can do. But I sure hope so. And uh, I think... I think if we can get up there and bang some bars with those guys throughout a, a full distance of a race, that'll be amazing. That'll be a great accomplishment for sure. Eight out of ten races this year, Jake Gagne has won them. He's been at the top step, and he's on a streak. He's on a roll, I'd like to say. So, Jake, congratulations. We wanted to get you on the show. We hope to have you on again at the end of the season to talk about how things wrapped up for you guys.
why, out of all the things you filmed with your camera, and God knows we don't want to know everything that you filmed with your camera, why motorcycles? <laughs> <laughs> Are you recording, Vance? <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> Did you see about 50 different of those? <laughs>